a uh, quick tutorial. Um, we're going to be heading back to our, uh, let's see, I believe it's our RPG attribute. Yeah. In here, our uh, stat linker value, we had this update linker call in here, which was being called every time we tried to access the stats value, which could potentially be a lot of times per update. So we're going to go back and kind of change how we're handling this. If you jumped into Unity and looked at our vital class, we had an event here for the on current value change. Now we're going to go create a couple interfaces which have similar events to this and add them to our other stats so we can see when their values change and use that in a way to make linkers update automatically uh, when a value stat value changes instead of just updating every time. So let's begin and jump back into Unity and go into our interfaces. In here, we'll create two new interfaces, one I stat value change, and a second one which will just be so we have an interface for this. And all we're gonna do is add this to our vital in a second, since it's gonna be I stat current value change. Now we can open up both of these. And in both, we're just gonna change them from a cl class to an interface. Remove this mono behavior and all the extra stuff inside. So we can do that for both. And there we go. Now we can jump over to our vital to save a couple seconds of typing and steal this event, ha event, event handler on current value change call. Copy all of it except for the public access modifier and return to our iStat current value change. We'll add this here. And we'll have to resolve by using a system so that we don't get an error from the event handler. And now we can jump over to our ISAP value change. We could paste the same line and do the same using system. Just change the on current value change to on value change. Just so we don't get them mixed up. And also jump back to our RPG vital class real quick. And we're going to add on to the iStat current value change just for clarity that, hey, the vital implements this interface since we already have the event right here. So we don't have to do anything more with the vital. Now, next, we're going to jump back into Unity and go down to our RPG stat modifiable. Since this is the closest class to the RPG stat, which actually changes the stat's value. So in here, we're going to be implementing the iStat value change interface. So we can just implement the interface, which is just this line. So I'm just going to move this up towards the top so we can easily access it. And next, we're going to come down here and add an extra method. I'm just going to call this protected. Oops. And this will be a void and call this just trigger value change. Now, the reason we have protected access modifier is we only want inside the class or any inheriting class to be able to trigger the value change event. So that's actually all it's going to do. We don't want any outside scripts to be triggering the value change event. So we'll continue on with this. So inside here, we want to check if the on value change event has any listeners by just checking if it's not null. And if it's not null, we'll just do value change and pass in this stat and null since we don't have any event arg set up at the moment since we don't need any additional information at this time. Now, one last additional thing we need to change in this class is down at the bottom of our update modifiers. Since we're changing the stats value, we'll call trigger value change. So we'll notify everyone listening to the stat. And that's all we have to do to update the uh, iSat or the RPG stat modifiable class. So back to Unity, and we'll open up our or 
sorry, our RPG attribute class. In here, we're going to go down this line and add uh, extra code. So first off, let's do the, uh, actually, first off, now that, let's jump over to our RPG stat linker class for a moment. Oh, we did not do this part yet. So we need to jump into our RPG stat linker and change or add some additional code here. So we want to, well, pretty much the stat linker wants to listen to the link stat on value change event. So in here, we're going to be listening to that. So when we add, well, actually, first off, when we're listening to an event, we need a method or a function that we can tie to it that will be called when the event occurs. So down here on the bottom, we'll just do private void, and we'll do on linked stat value change. And what's being passed to this is an object, and we'll call this just stat. And we'll go event args, and just call this args. We'll also have to be using system since event args is from the system namespace. Now, cool. Now, how do we make this tie into our stat? Up in our constructor, we'll go stat dot on. Oops, we do not have this. So, how do we check if a stat implements an interface? We want to go i stat value change. We'll just call this i val you change equals the stat we're linked to as the interface. Now, if this i value change change value is not equal to null, the stat that we're linking to implements this interface. So we can call value change dot on value change event and add our on linked state value change method to the event. So now after this is called, this function or method down here will be called every time the on value change event of the linked stat is called. So next step. Our link stat, we want to know when this linker, is its value is changed. So that event will be called every time the link stat's value is changed. So in here, just to make this simple, we're going to implement the i stat value change interface in here. And just let's just toss this up to the top, keep it all clean. And inside our on link stat value change, we're going to check if there's anyone listening to this event. So we'll just check if it's not null, and then call the event passing the linker and null, since we don't need any arguments at this time. So whenever the link stat is, event is called, we'll just trigger the linker stat event. That's all we have to do with the linker. So we'll jump back to our RPG attribute and we can continue. So in here, the attribute is going to listen to every linker that is added to the stat. So we're going to have to create a method that will listen to all the linkers events and have to add that method to every linker that is added to the stat and remove that method from every linker that is removed from the stat. So at the bottom, let's create a private void and let's call this, how about, how about on linker, linker value change. We'll just go object linker and event args, just call that args. And we'll have to be using system for the event args. So in here, whenever a linker's values change, what do we want to do? Well, this is simple. We just want to update our linkers. 
So now that it's being called in this method, up here in our stat linker value property, we no longer need this update linkers. Since every time a linkers value changes, it will call the on linker value change method and will automatically update the linkers. So the next step is we'll have to add this method to the linkers event. So to do that, we'll want to go into our add linker method. And right under adding it to our list, we'll go linker dot on value change plus equals on linker value change. Now we'll copy this line and jump down to our clear linkers. And here we want to do it a tiny bit different. Before we call this clear method on the linkers list, we're going to loop through all the linkers attached to the script and remove the method from each of those linkers. So for each linker in the stat linkers list, we're just going to go linker dot value change minus equals on linker value change. So that will remove the event method down here from the linkers event. And then finally, we'll just clear the linkers. And one last, the last change that we want to do, two changes in here actually, in our scale stat method and our update linkers stat, at the, after we call those methods, we assume that the stats value changes. So at the end of both of those methods, we'll add our trigger value change method call. That'll make it so any other stats listening will know that this stat changed its value. So that is all we have to do from there. Let's jump back into Unity, just to double check that we haven't got any errors and I do not have the console open. No, nope, we have no errors whatsoever. So if we drag and drop our, let's see, stat test, stat test, script onto any of the objects in the scene and run it, we'll get some values. And they should be changing, and it looks like they are correctly anyway, since we haven't actually changed any how the values change calculated. So if you check the script before we did all the changes, which I did not, these values should be identical to the ones before. The only change is that our stat values are, or our linker values are only updating when the, oops, I'm not on the attributes, when this event is triggered or when the link stats on value change event is triggered. So it's a little bit more optimized and it doesn't actually call update every time we try to access the stats value. So it's working a little bit better. Also, we got an additional feature which we can use outside of the scripts, where any external scripts can access the on value change event from any stats that implements it. So outside the script, we can ch actually listen to when a stat value changes of an individual stat. We can also see when the current value changes of a vital or any other class that implements the iStat current value change event. So we can pretty much listen to any stats value change. So we can have effects in our game that will occur when a value changes or based off something. So we can easily check that now, making it so we don't have to actually check every frame. But other than that, that's all we have for this little update to our linkers and how they're handled. So. In the next video, we're going to go back and change how our, let's see, let's jump to our, our stat modifiable class. We're going to go back and change how we're actually handling our, our stat or our stat modifiers. Since right here in this class, it's kind of just loosely out. We want to make it so it's easier to extend the modifiers to make it just, I don't know, so you can actually create your own class of the, our, the stat modifier and change it how it actually affects the stat instead of just having it list this way where we do all the calculations hard-coded this in here. So until the next video, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.